these asymmetric conflicts, places like Afghanistan, Iraq, Pakistan, the Philippines, and elsewhere, work by a fundamentally different logic than symmetric wars between states. Small Wars Big Data is about understanding these conflicts. Information from the civilians is critical to success in these asymmetric conflicts. So the counterinsurgents have to interact with the civilian population in a way that will induce them to provide information, uh, and that's going to be the key to victory. But information also matters in a second way, and this is where the book excels as well. We're now in an age where we have lots of information about conflicts, uh, but we can bring that together with sophisticated uh, statistical techniques, empirical uh, methods, which allow us to understand the outbreaks of conflicts, how they're fought, and how they can be won. And this book brings both halves together uh, in an exciting and innovative way. Small wars are different in really two ways. One is, it's not force on force, a two-sided conflict. It's really three-sided, strong side, weak side, and civilians. And the consequential role of civilians is not to provide resources or food or conscripts to either the strong side or the weak side. The most important thing that civilians do is share information or not share it. The big data innovation here is using cutting edge social science tools and applying them to conflict studies. So that's the econometrics, the data analytics, the program evaluation. We just know how to do a much better job of those things now than we did 15, 20 years ago. I think the most surprising thing, and we saw this over and over again in different contexts, was that sometimes small changes could have very large effects on the progression of these asymmetric conflicts. For example, in Iraq, we found that putting cell phone coverage in over an area for the first time dramatically reduces conflict, about 50% from the average level of conflict in those areas. Now, why is that? Well, it's because putting cell phone coverage in over an area makes it safer for people to call in tips. They can, from the security of their own home, reach out and share information about where the insurgents are or where the IEDs are. And what that does is it allows the government to more effectively address the security threat. So that small change, putting up a cell phone tower that cost maybe $250,000 max in the middle of the war, had huge effects on reducing the conflict. Jake and Ellie and I all share a real common motivation for, for this, this type of work in that, you know, as veterans, we appreciate that in these conflicts, these are real people paying real prices. These are young men and women that are paying the ultimate price with their lives, both, both in the military and civilians caught in a crossfire. And I think we owe it to, to all of them uh, to make sure we understand the nature of these conflicts and how we can stabilize these conflict areas. The, the, the stakes are just too high not to. Well, we've been at war in Afghanistan for 17 years now, 15 years in Iraq and neither of those conflicts look like they're going to end in the very near future. And so there's a tremendous amount that we can learn from the past and that's important to apply. This book should bring you inside conflict. For many years, scholars in security studies had looked at what goes on between conflicts. Our innovation and the innovation of the broader community that we've tried to support in the last decade is to look at what happens inside conflicts, why one village is safe and another is dangerous. And that's a new way of thinking about conflict. It's a new way of analyzing conflict.